Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to Community Journal. Thank you very much for joining us. We really appreciate it. We have a full show today, lots of information and uh, a lot going on. And, uh, lots of talking, Jack. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, you know, I can't believe we're talking about Labor Day, which, um, of course, is just right around the corner. And uh, that sort of ushers in the fall season, even though it's not technically fall. Um, but meanwhile, you know, we're going to get right to what's going on because we have a lot to tell you about. Uh, our first spot today, uh, we're going to take a look at the Brooks Library Youth Services Program. Ann Carpenter is going to bring us up to date with that, so let's take a look. Hi, I'm Ann Carpenter, here to talk about some of the great free programs we have at the Brooks Free Library this week. On Friday, August 23rd, we're going to be doing cardboard costumes um, inspired by the book The Cardboard Kingdom, um, where um, we're going to make lots of different cardboard costumes. So we have um, the miracle of modern science. I have found some cardboard knives that cut cardboard but don't cut my skin. And I still can't figure out how that works, but I'm not going to question it because it's amazing. Um, so we'll be cutting up cardboard, painting cardboard, making some full-on costumes. You can make a mask. You can make, like, full-body cardboard armor. Um, it is going to be a total blast, and I can't wait to see the different um, costumes that the kids make. On Monday, the 26th, we are going to have our regular preschool program, Mother Goose on the Loose, at 1030. And then on Tuesday, the 27th, we will have Animal World Experience, I'm bringing in their live animals. Um, after the show, they are going to have some petting time to let people touch their animals, which is always a great time. It is a free program, and it is always very popular when live animals are involved. So if you have a hard time parking, you can park across the street at Brooks Park or the Town Hall. We will be handing out free tickets starting at 2 o'clock on a first-come, first-served basis. On the 28th, which is a Wednesday, we're going to be having our final Build It Challenge of the summer, which is always my favorite one, the egg drop. So we give everybody, we clean out the craft closet, everything that's left over from all the summer crafts. You can use any of those materials to try to build something so that when I climb to the top of the ladder and throw an egg off the top of the ladder, your contraption needs to protect it so that we don't have egg all over the library. <laughs> Um, it's always a really fun time and really interesting to see the different contraptions people make. On Thursday, August 29th, we're going to be doing Read to Dogs. The Companion Animal Program brings in their therapy dogs and students can read to the dogs. It's really a lot of fun if you enjoy animals. Um, the dogs love to be read to, especially if you're a someone who has just started how to read. The dog never judges you. The dog never asks you to go, tries to correct what you just said, um, which is great. And they just enjoy being petted and read to. It's really a lot of fun. And that, again, is Thursday, August 29th at 2.30. And then our final special program for the summer will be on August 30th, um, another Friday craft. And we're going to be making paper octopuses, which are really cute. Our summer reading program is still going on. You can continue to sign up right up until the last day before school ends. Every time you read for two and a half hours, you get a free book and a small prize. As always, if you have any questions about our summer reading program, books, or any other um, questions that the library can answer for you, you can reach us at brooksfreelibrary.org or call us at 508-430-7562, and the Youth Services is extension 2. Well, as always, Ian has some great things to offer uh, both adults and children at the library. Yes, that's important to and, uh, point out to uh, the youth for services. All ages. Yeah, the youth services program there is great. Second it, to none. It really is. I know our kids took advantage of it, and uh, uh, you know they still talk about it really when yeah, they're here. Yeah, they want their kids to take advantage of it when they're here. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have an announcement there. I have several, and this is one of many. <laughs> <laughs> the Monomoy Dollars for Scholars announces continuing education scholarship applications are opening up on September 1st. Now, this is important, and if you are interested, please get your pen and paper. Monomoy Dollars for Scholars announces that applications for the continuing education scholarships will be available September 1st for the final application deadline of October 31st, 2019. Scholarships will be awarded in December. Graduates of Monomoy Regional High School, Chatham High School, Harwich High School, or residents of Chatham or Harwich who graduated from neighboring schools are eligible. These scholarships are for college students entering their second, third, or fourth year 
in an accredited two or four year school. Applications are accepted online and are available on the website, now get ready, HTTPS co uh, colon? Yes, colon, yep. and then forward slash, forward slash, yep. Chatham dot dollars for scholars dot org. Again, HTTPS colon, forward slash, forward slash, Chatham dot dollars for scholars dot org, no capitals and no spaces. And that's where you will find the instructions on how to apply. Graduates who apply during high school can update an existing application. Just click on the tab for parents and students and follow instructions for continuing ed scholarships. Please contact them by email if you need any assistance. And the email is monomoy, D as in dog, F as in Frank, S as in Sam, at gmail.com. If you or your organization would like more information about dollars Monomoy Dollars for Scholars, please call co-presidents Margaret Martin at, and here is her phone number, 508-945-3696 or DTRIP 508-945-2227. Businesses, organizations, individuals, memorials, and foundations wishing to set up a scholarship should also contact either Martin or TRIP for more information. These scholarships are competitive and renewable for students who graduated from Monomoy Regional High School. And donations to Monomoy Dollars for Scholars, for those of you who would like to help out, may be sent to P.O. Box 244, North Chatham, Mass., 02650. Every dollar donated or memorial gift will be appreciated. They are a 501c3 organization and donations are tax deductible. So important information there. And I imagine that this is probably available um, here at the community center. So um, if you don't want to go online, you can pick this up uh, and hopefully it will help you. <laughs> Very good. Thanks, Eileen. <clears throat> well, the American Red Cross is going to be giving, uh, sponsoring a community blood drive here in Harwich, uh, right here at the community center. And it's going to take place on Thursday, uh, September 19th. Uh, from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, this is an opportunity to give blood right here at the community center and um, you know this is a way that you can save lives and uh, very very important. Uh, you can call 1-800-RED-CROSS that's 1-800-733-2767 or visit redcrossblood.org and enter HW Community to schedule an appointment now they also have a streamlined way of, uh, uh, you can save up to 15 minutes by visiting redcrossblood.org slash rapid pass to complete your pre-donation reading and health history questions on the day of your appointment. So now that will save you 15 minutes, makes it a lot easier. So if you want to do it that way, you can do it that way as well. Again, that's the uh, Harwich Community Drive sponsored by the American Red Cross. And that's on Thursday, September 19th, from 12 to 5 p.m. Very good. Want to do another one? Sure. Why not? <clears throat> the Senior Corps Volunteer Program of Elder Services of Cape Cod and Islands is hosting a food drive for the Cape and Islands Veterans Outreach Center's Food Pantry. The project is a Senior Corps National Initiative Day of Service called September 11th Day of Service and Remembrance Project. They are collecting shelf-stable items and food gift cards. The Veterans Food Pantry is in need of hot and cold cereals, apple cranberry V8 juices, toilet paper, soap, canned tuna and chicken, canned vegetables, dish soap, um, and so on, a shaving cream, razors, shampoo. So you can I think, get this list here at the Community Center as well. And the collection point is the Harwich Community Center right here at 100 Oak Street, Harwich. Uh, it started on August 14th and it's going to end on September 11th and you can come in the COA door I was told and it's right inside there that you can deposit your uh, donation. So for more information you can contact Mary Ann Ryan, Senior Corps RSVP Director. Um, I'm just going to give you the phone number 508-394-4630. Again 508-394-4630, Mary Ann Ryan for more information on that. And that is something that we can all take part in. Very good. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. 
Uh, the Howitch Democratic Town Committee is to hear from Howitch's Director of Emergency Man Management. Uh, as all of you know, we did have a tornado around here. Uh, the Howitch Democratic Town Committee's monthly meeting will be Saturday, September 7th at 10 a.m. at the Howitch Community Center. There will be a presentation by Lee Culver, Howitch's Director of Emergency Management. In the wake of the tornado, members wanted to hear more on how to be included in Howitch's voice broadcast and other preparedness things citizens can do uh, to keep safe during emergencies. The Howitch Democratic Town Committee meets on the first Saturday of each month at the Howitch Community Center. For more information, please contact Ray Gottwald at raygottwald at aol.com or check out their Facebook page at Harwich Democratic Town Committee. And again, that's Lee Culver speaking, uh, and he's going to talk about emergency, emergency management, uh, especially since uh, we had quite a lesson in it this, uh, this past summer, mm. that's for sure. And that's September 7th. Uh, at uh, 10 a.m. right here in the community center. Sounds like a good thing to uh, come to. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. um, okay, our next piece uh, today, uh, we're going to catch up with the COA. Emily Mitchell uh, recently sat down with me to bring us up to date, so let's take a look. Oh, hi, everyone. Of course, here we are almost to Labor Day, and, uh, you know, with that, uh, that is sort of the calling for a change in season. And uh, we're going to be entering the fall season, which makes it a little bit different around town. And with that, we have a special guest with us today. Um, and I think it's a familiar face. She is a familiar face. This is Emily Mitchell. If you don't know her, you should know her. Uh, she is the director of the Council on Aging here in Harwich. Um, very important person to know. And Emily, since we are beginning or about ready to change the seasons, you've got a lot to tell us. We do. Thank you, Jack, for having me. I certainly appreciate it. Um, the first thing I'm excited to tell you about is our next volunteer recognition event. So we are doing a volunteer recognition barbecue. It's going to be right here at the community center. We've reserved the backfield. The fire association is bringing their grills over. So we'll have hamburgers, hot dogs, potato salad, pasta salad, regular salad, really the whole deal. Oh, cool. um, and we're, we're really thrilled to do that. So anyone who's volunteered with, with us or with the Friends of the Harwich Council on Aging is welcome. Um, so please give us a call. Um, our number is 508-430-7550. And just we're asking for folks to RSVP by the 17th of September so we can know how much food to buy, how many volunteers we need to, to prepare the food and serve the food. Um, but the event itself is on September 24th. It's a Tuesday. Um, and it's from 12 to 2, so right around lunchtime. And we're, we're just really thrilled to take this opportunity to thank our volunteers because they do so much for us that, day in and day out year round. Boy, that is a really nice thing to do. And I know you have a lot of, about how many volunteers do you have uh, approximately? All told, we have about 100. Um, wow. Between folks who help at our reception desk, right, our volunteer right. drivers, taxes, health insurance, really, they, co they run the gamut and they're here. And yes, yeah, so we have about 100 all told, which is wow. an incredible thing to say. It's quite a community we have here. Well, that is really great and uh, sounds like a very nice uh, way to have lunch. It certainly <laughs> does. I'm looking forward to it. It's a perfect time of year that we can still be it outside. Is. It's still, you know, comfortable to be outside. Um, it is going to happen, rain or shine. If it rains, we'll just move things inside so we don't have to worry about weather stopping us. Mm -hmm. um, but we're certainly hoping to enjoy that backfield and have a little volunteer picnic barbecue. Oh, that sounds great, Emily. Wow. Well, that's, of course, just one thing uh, that's going on with the COA. What else is going to be happening? So that same week, it's a busy week for us. That Friday, September 27th, we're working with the Sound Dune Swing Ensemble again. So they, their 17-piece band will be here Friday night. Um, they're going to be performing music. So we'll have dancing. We'll have refreshments. You can just sit and listen if that's what you prefer to do. Um, and we will be providing transportation to that event. So it's an evening event, but we can still transport folks if that's something that they need on our, our COA van. So we've had those dances with the, the Sound Dunes before. They've always been a huge, huge hit. We're thrilled to have them back. Um, so that will be September 27th, again, a Friday, and that's 6 to 8 p.m. We are asking folks to RSVP by that Wednesday, September 25th. We will have to cap it at about 80 just because of the size of the space. Uh, so that's why we're asking for an RSVP. 
But again, we are, we're excited to have it. It's another fun, exciting event. It certainly is. And, uh, you know, I've heard the sound dunes uh, mm -hmm. several times. And if you, it's not too often that you get to hear a big band, a live big band mm -hmm. sound. And uh, these folks have it. They're really good. So uh, this is a great opportunity. And uh, when do people have to RSVP by? Is there a specific date? September 25th. Mm -hmm. um, so the event is the 27th. The RSVP date is the 25th. So uh -huh. you have pretty close up to the event to RSVP. We just need to make sure we have that total count. Wow, that's great. And that's being held? It'll be here at the community center in the large multi-purpose room, that function room. Oh, boy. Yes. All, all those guys and ladies playing together in there. It's going to be a big sound. It <laughs> is going to be a big sound. I'm looking forward to it. It's always one of my favorite events when we have them yeah, in. Yeah, that's great. And uh, what else do you have to tell us about? Well, so last, since the last time I was here, I don't know if folks know, but we had a tornado. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and we have um, a really fabulous just private member of our community. Her name is Heather Hinckley. She reached out to us right after the storm hit. Um, she works with a garden club with folks who um, have plants, and she knows that people in this area in particular may have lost their plants or their gardens due to storm damage. Mm -hmm. And she's working with folks who are donating plants, um, and then they're going to deliver those plants to homes who had damage. So if you either are someone who has plants to donate or who could benefit from having plants to replace any damage in your garden, you can get in touch with Heather. I have her contact information. It's probably easiest if you call us at the COA, again, 508-430-7550, and we can pass your information along to Heather. She's hoping to get plants delivered that third week in September, which is the 21st and 22nd. Um, so you don't have to do anything other than put your name on a list. She's going to get your information, she's going to collect the plants, and they have volunteers who are driving them right out to your home. The only thing they aren't do that they aren't doing is planting them. So you would be responsible for planting them yourselves. Mm -hmm. um, but again, so if you either have plants to donate, maybe you're splitting your plants before in the fall before the winter comes, um, or if you need plants, she's looking for for folks in both situations uh, to help coordinate what this effort. What a great idea! That is a great idea because I know a lot of people did have damage. Exactly. And, uh, Oh, that is wonderful. Yeah. I know. When we have a community, someone just reach out to us immediately like that, it really reminds you we live in a good place. We certainly do. That's very, very true. Do you have anything else? I think that's all I have for you today. Wow, I yes. think that's really great. <laughs> You've certainly um, brought us an awful lot here today, and we really appreciate you. T you, you have such a busy schedule. We do. And, um, you know, that September is going to be really busy. Definitely. And, uh, we really uh, appreciate you coming on here and uh, letting us know what's going to be happening. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. We'll see you later. Take care, Emily. Thanks, Jack. You know, Emily is doing such a great job, and that plant idea is just wonderful. I think it's wonderful. Because a lot of people have lost gardens. their gardens. Mm -hmm. With the felled um, trees. With the trees, yeah. and the trees just came down and ruined the gardens. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that, that's a great idea. Yeah. Great initiative. Nice. Yeah, yes. thank, we thank Emily for taking time out of her busy schedule. She's, uh, she's pretty busy. Yes, she is. Yeah. Okay, Eileen. And we're you, lucky to have her. What do you have? Oh, I like this next oh, one. Oh, I know. This is your favorite. <laughs> Presented by the Harwich Community Center Touch a Truck. I love this. Saturday, September 28th from 11 in the morning to 2 p.m. at the Community Center parking lot. It's going to be a free event. Kids of all ages <coughs> are invited to climb up on and sit in the driver's seat of some of their favorite trucks and interact with the people who help protect and maintain our community. Touch a Truck is an interactive and educational event that gives children of all ages the chance to learn about their favorite trucks. For more information, call 508-430-7568. And also, you can drop off your old Halloween costumes at Touch a Truck. Uh, we are now collecting Halloween costumes here at the Community Center at this event for our upcoming boutique costume <laughs> donation drive. Kids will be able to pick out their costumes on October 18th from 5 to 8 p.m. and everything will be free. So that, is, that is a wonderful I know. effort, too. It's one, of, it's one of my favorite things. Yeah, yeah, it really Some event. year we have to find the time to go. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. It's one of my favorite things to announce. <clears throat> and another one. Well, do you want to do one and then I'll do Yeah, ahead. I'll do one and then. All right. Um, this one uh, looks like a new one f to me anyway. The Cape and Islands Rowing Association. Oh. Um, this is the Cranberry Sprints. 
on Saturday, uh, the, let's say the 7th of September, from 8 a.m. to noon. And uh, this is a rowing regatta. Our focus is on fun. There will be stake races, all skill levels, awards will be given, equipment will be supplied, there will be refreshments, and there's a $20 one-time race fee. The location is Long Pond Beach off of Long Pond Drive in Harwich and um, cancellation for severe weather only. And, um, and please, refillable bottle, water bottles only. Ah. So yeah, good, uh, good point. Mm -hmm. And um, if you need more information, you can go to capeandislandsrowing.org and um, the Cranberry Sprints. It's the third annual rowing regatta. Wow. Yeah, that's, that Good sounds like fun. Yeah, yeah it does. For those of you that are into, into rowing. Mm -hmm. I haven't rowed in 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even remember I, when I last rowed. I think if I row now, my arms <laughs> would fall off. <laughs> oh, your turn. So perhaps you shouldn't try. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <clears throat> the Cape Cod Healthcare Nicholas G. Zaros Blood Donor Center is holding a What's Donated Here Stays Here Battle of the Badges. Please join your local police department in a friendly competition to see who can collect the most blood at their blood drive. Be a hero and join this life-saving battle. And um, the Harwich one, the Harwich PD is going to be held on Wednesday, August 28th. So that's coming up Wednesday, August 28th, next week, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, at 183 Susan Road, Harwich. And donors receive a complimentary movie pass. So Yeah, and what's go. donated here stays here. Yes, it and does. And that's a great poster with, Isn't all, with it? all the yeah, badges. Yeah, with all I, the badges. I don't know if we can get a picture of that, but uh, it's, a, it's really a great yeah, poster. It yeah, it is. Very nice. Okay. <laughs> well, our next piece today, I'm going to bring you up to date with what's going on here at the community center. I recently sat down with Carolyn Carey, and she not only leads the community center, she leads three things around here. And uh, I'll be reminding you of that as we go into this piece. So let's take a look right now. Well, hi, everyone. And uh, here we are, almost to Labor Day. And uh, that means uh, that sort of is the uh, ushering in of a new season. And we're going to change from summer to fall very soon. And uh, that doesn't mean things slow down here uh, in Harwich. And uh, I have somebody here that uh, really is the prime example of not slowing down. Uh, Carolyn Carey uh, is joining uh, me today. And Carolyn, I don't know if people know uh, how much you actually do around here. You hold three titles. You're the director of the community center. You uh, involved in director of the Harwich Cultural Center. And you're also the prime mover behind behind the artisan shacks at Sacquatucket Harbor. Do I have that all correct? Only if people like them. <laughs> if they don't like them, I don't know who does it. I don't. I, I will say for sure. So no one told me Eileen was gone. I could have been here the whole time with you. Gone. I didn't check. I, I don't know how you keep up with all you have to do. But I know one thing. Uh, the artisan shacks have been a huge success. Because that's the newest thing that's happened. It is the newest things. And honestly, I will say, uh, my dad always told me that you can do anything if you surround yourself with good people. And I have been fortunate to surround myself with some fabulous people who do yeoman's work and probably don't get enough credit. So to all of them, I thank them. And I've had such a great opportunity to meet so many people in not only this building, but down at the, at the sheds, the artisan shacks. And in the cultural center, such different people coming in using yeah. different spaces, but the sheds have been very, very popular. We're completely full, which means all full four sheds are full with different artisans, and we change over. So every Wednesday, there's new people in, wow. and we go through Labor Day, and then as promised, we're going to take a little time because we've been asking all of the renters uh, to give us some feedback focusing more on anything that we might be able to improve, mm -hmm. not on the positive, because it's been a great experience, mm -hmm. but this is our first season. We want to know what we're doing. How can we make it better? What, what do you see at other venues that maybe we can adopt? I'm mm -hmm. all about working smarter, not harder, oh so. <laughs> well, I know Eileen and I visited them uh, not too long ago, right. and uh, 
couldn't get her out of there. <laughs> Tell her to come back. It's all new vendors. So that's yes. right. You're right. It's a it's it's a it new experience. All the time. Yeah. It really is. Um, and it's been great to be down at the harbor with people coming over from Brax, people taking the boats, the new dockside restaurant. Mm -hmm. It's just a lot of um, new energy. So if you haven't been down, even if you're not going to stop at the sheds, although we hope you do, just go down and take a look at it because you know it's a beautiful harbor yeah, down there. Yeah, They've is, done a nice is. job. Yeah. And it's, it's great for people of Harwich to see. Now, how long will the sheds stay open? So this year they're just going to stay open through Labor Day and then okay. we'll take a little break. Um, but next year they'll be open through the month of September. Ah, okay. Very good. So That's really great. Seeing, uh, I haven't read all of the reviews yet, to be honest. I thought I would wait till they all came in so that I can put them in places like if people say more signs, which are on order, just so you know. <laughs> uh, we do know we need that. Wow. Uh, so it's going to be a, it's been a learning experience. Wow, that I've is, learned a that great deal. Wonderful. Yeah, so, it's been fun. It's been really fun. Tell us what else is going on. I know. Oh. So as you were saying, I am not running the summer away at all. But September is exciting because it's our Touch a Truck event, oh, which is so much fun. Event. We're so grateful to police, fire, um, some local companies, the water department, the highway department. It's just a great free event. And as always, we're trying to get our secret truck here, which might be one of the favorites. It might involve ice cream, but I'm not saying anything. No, <laughs> uh, but that is September 28th. So I know it's a little ways away, but we like to tell people in advance. Um, and then it's just happening so fast. Our boutique where we collect the costumes for oh, that's young a children. Thing you do it every is. Year. Yeah. So maybe if you're coming to the Touch a Truck, you can bring your old costumes. We'll have a box outside. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not necessary. Again, it is a free event. But if you have them and you want to drop them off, uh, we'd love to grab some costumes so that we can pass them on to other families that might need them. Costumes are expensive. Yes, they really are. That's nobody true. wants to wear theirs twice. You always want to be something new. So this is a great opportunity. Wow. They, uh, It's always a nice time at the party. And that party happens on October 18th. So we'll be collecting really from now until October 18th. So <laughs> wow, That's amazing. Uh, and then, of course, a very big Halloween party is coming up. But those are in October. So We'll get you more information on those. You can always find it on our website. Um, certainly, I know that you've mentioned several times about the Cape Verdean event that is here in the yes. building. Mm -hmm. We're excited for that right around the corner. Down at the harbors is the official opening greeting of the Lieutenant Governor. That's on Tuesday. I know you have all those announcements, but just since you listed everything, I had to remember. <laughs> Whew. Um, and one very big announcement. Our weight room here in the community center will be closed on Monday. So again, um, Monday the 26th, we have to close the weight room. They are working on a large piece of equipment that's for the air conditioning that is in the ceiling and they actually have to bring it down so there'll be no room for people to walk and it's a safety hazard. So that was an unforeseen mm -hmm. happening. As you know, we like to keep the uh, weight room open as much as possible. I truly do not know what time they will finish, but if they finish, uh, whenever they finish, you can certainly call in, we'll let you know if it's mm -hmm. open, but it, they thought it would be pretty much a full day project. So oh, right. that is the 26th, the weight room will be closed. Just a reminder, you should have your new weight room membership. They started in July. Oh, I Our have numbers been are not, up. I've not been good. <laughs> I no. have to be honest, I've not you're, been good. You're good because you're gonna, you know, you like to come to it and it's, you know what, it's that at that time of year some people are outside, they're doing a lot of stuff, yeah, you have a lot of company. Right, right. But we always have room for more people. So oh, this is wonderful. a one time thing that never happens. We never have to close that room, but I'm sorry. We need to make sure that you can have air, nice air conditioning in there so you don't get too warm. So it was a balancing, and that was the day Good. that they could come and do it all in one day so we wouldn't have to be closed multiple days. Wow. Very and with good. being open on Sundays, there wasn't even a Sunday I could get them in because oh, really? we're open Sundays too, which is a, just a little reminder. If you have a weight room membership, we're here. Wow. So come on in. It's amazing. 
You, I don't know. Woo! I don't know how you keep track of it all. I really don't. All I know is I see you running around this building <laughs> constantly. Then That's if I go over to the um, cultural center, you're over there <laughs> running around. I don't know how you do it. I really don't. It's all the good people that you have oh, around you. But you are the leader of all those good people. You are very, very kind. No, you're, you're doing a wonderful job. Well, I what tried else? to get your job, but psh, I guess it didn't <laughs> work out. Jamie didn't give it to me, so you're safe. Uh, uh, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> but Eileen's not here. No, I'm just teasing. I'm teasing. So, no, well, Carolyn, uh, is there anything else you want to share with us? Uh, no, but if you have any suggestions for the community center, we do have a suggestion box, um, and people have given us wonderful ideas or things I haven't thought about. Please don't hesitate. You can always call me or email me, or if you feel more comfortable, just drop it in the suggestion box. It's located right at the front of the building, yeah, so great. there's a small set suggestion box. Uh, we're happy to take any, you know, as we're getting ready to turn a very big number here in the community center, we're looking for input from the public too because in February we'll be having a very large 20th birthday party. I can't believe it's I know, years. I'm so excited. I can't believe it's 20 years. I know, it's yeah. very exciting and yeah, yeah. Um, with the help of Channel 18 we'll take a look back at what it looked like as it was being built wow. and things that have happened. Uh, it's exciting that we have that footage, and we're so grateful they've yeah, been working on it for looking us. Looking forward to seeing that. I yeah, know. It'll, it'll be, be an exciting time. 20 years this building feels like yesterday, uh, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it sure does. I mean, we were just getting active down here 20 years ago. We weren't even here full time, and uh, we remember when it had started, and uh, it has just come so far. Can you picture the town without it? No. I really Absolutely I can't. Not. It's great. Absolutely not. And that's because of all the great people that come in, yeah. utilize it, give us ideas. So thank yeah. you. Well, Carolyn, thank you. You are. I'll, I'll let you continue your running. So. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'd be smaller with all this running? It's not helping. <laughs> thank you so much for joining <laughs> thank us. Thank you. And we really appreciate you bringing us up to date. Thanks. Well, thank you, Carolyn, for spending that time with me and uh, bringing us up to date. Um, very nice of her. It was a great interview. Both of them were. You oh, did a nice well, job. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> it's not my usual forte, but uh, uh, the person I'm interviewing makes it very easy. So. Oh, well, <laughs> don't be so modest. No, no, they, they are. They're really great people. Um, we've announced this before, and just another reminder that on Wednesday, August 28th, there's a great opportunity uh, to meet President Francisco Walter Tavares. Uh, he is the president of the island of Brava, the Republic of Cape Verde. Uh, he is going to be here at the community center at um, 6 p.m. And again, this uh, is a great honor to have him here. So that time is, uh, is arriving on the 28th. Uh, it's a real privilege to welcome him. So uh, if you get a chance to come down and meet him, he will be speaking. And um, he'll have a very interesting talk about the Brava fleet and the Ernestina, the ship, the Ernestina. So, uh, sounds wonderful. Yeah, I yeah, mean, he that really is an does. Honor to have him here. Yeah, and the Ernestina is the official tall ship of the Commonwealth of Mass. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and it's uh, preserved and berthed in New Bedford. Oh. So you can actually see it. Excellent. So, yeah. Yeah. So, what do you have? Well. If you have a few hours of your time to give a month, do I have an opportunity for you? Monomoy Regional School District needs you. Be a mentor. Connect with local students. By giving just a few hours a month of your time, you can help change the course of a child's life. The Monomoy Lighthouse Leader Mentoring Program is seeking caring adults from our community to provide one-on-one -on -one connections with students. Opportunities are available at the elementary school, middle school, and high school levels. To learn how you can be part of this important program, please contact Joy Jordan, MRSD Community Engagement Coordinator, and the phone number is 508-237-1781. If you want to go online, it's jjordan at monomoy.edu. And the phone number again, 508-237-1781. And as former educators and retired educators, we both know how important it is to have caring adults in the community to come and help children that need caring. Yeah, no, that's really a nice mm. opportunity for it somebody is, that has work. to support children. Yeah, what's that the need time it. commitment, Eileen? Uh, a couple of hours a month. Wow, that's that's really yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah, hopefully some people will step up to yeah, that. Very important. Do what important. you can. Yes. 
Uh, now we're going to join the two Emilys, Emily Milan and <laughs> Emily Carter, and they're going to bring us up to date uh, with what's going on at the Brooks Library. So let's take a look. Hi everyone, I'm Emily Carta. I'm a staff librarian over at Brooks Free Library and I'm here today with Emily Milan, our assistant director, to do a little bit of a summer wrap up and then to talk about one of our really exciting collections that we've been expanding this summer. So let's actually start with that because that's really fun. I brought a couple things with me today that you may not know that we have. So typically when you think library, you think dusty books, DVDs, maybe a couple puzzles. Libraries are actually renting out more than just that these days, and they're calling it a library of things. So if you come over to Brooks and you look on our shelf on the second floor near reference, you'll find a turntable, we have a GoPro, um, we have a car code reader where you can check why that check engine light is coming on in your car. These things are all free for you to borrow, just like a library book would be. So all you need is a clams card, and you can come in, check most things out for about two weeks, and then bring it back to us. There's, again, no cost for using it. If you don't see something that you would love to see in there and you want to try it, just put a request in at our website at brooksfreelibrary.org on the Library Things page. And Emily, do you have anything else about the... Oh, yes, I just want to mention one of the other things that we brought with us today was our bullet journal kit. We have created some craft kits as well. So I think we have a spirograph and yeah. we have um, a calligraphy and brush lettering, all different art um, kits as well as our baking kits, which brings me to a challenge. I have a challenge <laughs> for Emily Carta and Jamie. I'm going to challenge you to a literary baking contest. We have a new pie baking kit. It was one of the kits that Emily added this summer. Mm -hmm. And I just read a great Alice Hoffman book. Um, I, I didn't realize that she wrote some young adult novels as oh. well. I've really enjoyed her adult novels. But I picked up one of her young adult novels earlier in the summer, and there was a recipe for apple pie. So, my daughter Sophia and I are going to borrow the GoPro, and we're going to borrow the, um, the baking kit, and we want to challenge you to a pie baking contest, or a literary baking contest. It doesn't have to be a pie, but you and Jamie versus oh me and Sophia. Gosh. We will definitely have to do that. All right, we're, great. We're absolutely going to do it. There's an Outlander cookbook that oh. I think probably has a good pie recipe, All or right. a meat pie recipe. Yes, so the rules are going to be um, that you do have to make a video, okay. and you have to bring it in for a taste test with the staff. Okay. Um, and it has to be literary related. So you have okay. to, your cookbook, your Outlander cookbook would be perfect. We're going to bake the apple pie from Alice Hoffman's new YA okay. novel. All right? That'll be really good. All right. <laughs> good plan. So if you haven't checked anything out from the Library of Things, um, as Emily mentioned, there's a page on our website that lists all of the different kits that are available. Or you can come in, head upstairs to the second floor. If you need help finding the collection, just check in at the reference desk, and they'll point you in the right direction. Yeah, the other thing to say about the Library of Things, too, is some of these items, you'll just see the box on the shelf, and you'll want to bring the box. So like for the GoPro, if you see this on the shelf, you're just going to want to bring it down to circulation and then we'll go get it for you from the back office. We keep things back there just because there's little parts and pieces and sometimes they can go rolling if boxes are opened up. So if you see this, you know it's in. If you don't see it, that probably means it's checked out, but feel free to ask anyways. It could be that it just came back today and we just haven't checked it in yet. All right, great. And these are non-requestable, is that right? That's right, yeah. Okay. So you so can't put any holds on them, unfortunately. All right, can't put holds on them, but if they're available on the shelf, they're yours for the taking. Um, I think it's two weeks for most of our items. Yep, most um, things are two weeks. Yeah, yeah, and we'd love for you to give them a try. Like Emily said, if there's something that you're interested in seeing in the collection that we don't have yet, we're looking for ideas, and you can suggest those through the Library of Things page on our website. Yep. But, um... Summer wrap-up. Oh, yeah. It's been a busy summer. It has been. This is the first time we've been in the studio all summer long because it's been so busy, and we're really loving all the new changes in here. Yeah, it's gorgeous in here now. Yeah. But um, so for the end of summer, we know that you've been cleaning out your personal libraries, your car, your beach bag, and you're finding library items to return. You can drop off library items at any Clams library. It doesn't have to be returned directly to us. So if you're staying in Chatham or if you're staying in born you can drop it off at eldridge or at the born public library either um, and it will find its way back to us we're all part of the clams network here on cape cod and on the islands so everything does go in delivery and gets back where it's supposed to go if you have any books that are overdue feel free to call us we can renew it for you um, overdue fines are very minimal and at our library we're not 
so concerned about fines we're more concerned about getting the item back <laughs> we would love to continue circulating it so if you can return it to us that's great even if it's been lost since last summer we're happy to get it back and that will actually reduce the amount of fines you see on your account from that bigger bill which may be you know fifteen twenty dollars for a full replacement to a more manageable three dollars which you know, that's way under the twenty five dollar limit that you have so you can kind of just let that sit if you want that's totally okay um, other summer things to look forward to is Anne is going to be wrapping up the children's summer reading program. So there's still time to get your slips in. Please do if you have been reading. And you can always head over to the Youth Services Desk if you have any questions about that as well. They are more than happy to help you there. We have a great team over there who can answer all your questions about youth, um, children's books, what to read next, give suggestions, help you on the homework center computers, get you ready for the new school year, which is starting soon. Mm -hmm. Summer reading for school, if the kids haven't yes. wrapped up their summer reading or they've lost their book or they need help finding something, they're ready to help with that. Yeah. And she still has some fun programs going on for the last couple of weeks of summer as yeah. well. So take a look at our calendar online to see what all is going on. Yeah, and as we slide into September, look for our adult programming, kind of making a little bit of more of a comeback. I know during the summer it's more family-focused than it is in the off-season when we have a lot of programs for everyone. Um, but in September, we're going to have some special events for Climate Preparedness Week, mm -hmm. Climate Prep Week. So if you guys have heard that term floating around on social media, please uh, look out for our calendar that's coming out soon and for our flyer that's going to be on the CERC desk. We will have some special programming. We may have a meteorologist come speak at the library. So there's going to be a lot of fun things for that. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. And our book groups have been going strong throughout the summer, but um, as Emily mentioned, when we get back into the swing of things in fall, our music series will return. We'll have our monthly music series. So you can keep an eye on the calendar to see um, what musician or group will be featured each month. And we also have some fun stuff um, planned with Voter Information Committee around civic engagement and civic um, uh, activity here in town. So we're excited about that. Um, but first, we're going to wrap up summer and um, enjoy Labor Day and the Cranberry Festival yeah. in September, and then we'll get back in gear with all of our great adult programming after that. And we're going to be open for the Cranberry Festival, We right? will be open this year for the Cranberry Festival. Typically, the library has been closed, um, but we had some parking available last year, and we decided that it would be nice for people to you know, be able to come in and pick things up. So we'll be open for the Cranberry Festival um, in September. Yeah. All right. And for those of you going off Cape, or if you just don't want to come into the library one day, you can always keep up with us on our podcast, Brooks Free Library Podcast. You can find episodes on our website or on your favorite platform. I know we're on Apple Podcasts, we're on Spotify. So just look up our name. We tend to not really have a plan, but if you know Jamie, she's often at the reference desk. It's Jamie and myself who run the podcast, and we do bits and pieces of info about what's going on, what we find interesting. So please take a look at that if you would like. I know I found a lot of good book suggestions through listening to the yeah, podcast, yeah. so it's always nice to hear what other people are reading and to get an idea of what's out there that maybe hasn't shown up on your radar yet. So thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. um, we mentioned uh, cleanup at the end of summer, and I just wanted to see if maybe we want to throw in some information about book donations, because yeah. we tend to get a lot of book donations throughout the summer and this time of year as people are kind of cleaning out and going through things. So do you want to mention sure. some of our requirements? Yeah. Um, actually, we put out a newsletter, too, recently that had a big kind of expanded list on what we look for when we're at the desk and we're going through those books with you. So if you want to look at our newsletter archive, it's on our homepage at the bottom right hand corner. And I think it's about two ish weeks ago at this point, but you can take a look there and I'll also probably post some of the same information on our book donation page. But more or less, the things that we are looking for are books that are in like new condition that have been printed within the last five years. Those tend to move the best on our shelves. Don't know why, but that's just how it is. Um, if it's a hardcover book, it needs to have that paper jacket that goes around it called a dust jacket. And that part does need to be in good condition as well. So if it has any like, major rips or stains on it, then that may be a reason we can't take the book. Um, and no, no musty smells or anything like that. If it's been stored in an attic for a while, even if it's in really good condition, we just, unfortunately, we can't accept it because sometimes stuff like that does spread. And sometimes it's also an indication of mold, even though you can't see it. So we don't want to endanger the collection downstairs in the bookstore or the collection upstairs in the library. But if you have any questions, you can look on our website under Make a Donation. There will be information there. You can also call the Circulation Desk at any time, and one of us will be happy to help you. 
We do ask, though, for any donations, please bring it to the circulation desk and don't leave it outside in front of the book drop or put it in the book drop just because when it's outside, it kind of becomes a tripping hazard. And then in the book drop, our book drop fills up like crazy during the summer. We run down there all the time. We have volunteers going down, staff. Um, so we really do need that space for library items. So if you could just please bring it to the circulation desk. If you have trouble getting it out of your car, we are happy to come help you. That is part of the job. Um, it's like lifting yeah. 40 pounds, yeah. I yeah. think, is in the requirement. Yeah. So we, um, we definitely can come help you with that. And if you have a larger donation, more than about like two boxes worth, I would say call us ahead of time. We may be able to get you in touch with the friends who run the bookstore and see if someone would be willing to come out or to help you like preemptively weed over the phone through things that maybe we, we know offhand that we can't take. But that's book donations. Yeah, and we really do welcome those book donations. Our book sale room and the profits from that book sale room go to pay for a lot of our children's programming throughout the summer. Um, the friends also use that those donations and that money to um, help support our collection development and some mm -hmm. other things as well. So we really do appreciate those and welcome them. Um, we just have to find a way to do it in a manageable yeah. way for everybody. We don't want you dragging in boxes of books if it's you know not at a time where we can yeah. go through them with you. So and we want to make it easy. Yeah. Our shelves are really. We want to make it easy for everybody. We do. All we right. Do. Yeah. But, all right. So that's it for summer wrap up. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to call, call circulation. Um, it's extension one when you call the library. And that's it. We'll see you next time. Yep. Yeah. Take care. Well, it's great to see the two Emilys there. And uh, what was even amazing was to see a record player. I know, and they <laughs> are coming back because vinyl's coming back. Vinyl is coming back mm -hmm. big time. In fact, our son just gave us a yeah. huge vinyl collection, Virgin Vinyl, mm -hmm. of Roy Orbison. I know. And, and some of the songs oh. that uh, <laughs> uh, Vic, collection. Vic, our cameraman, <laughs> is going <laughs> <laughs> um, of, of songs that we've probably never heard, stuff that never got released. Mm. And we've played one of the albums so far, and it just sounds gorgeous. Yeah, there's nothing so, like it. Yeah, yeah. You always say that. Yeah, that's, it's true. Well, folks, that's our show for this week. We really appreciate you tuning us in. On behalf of all of us here at Channel 18, thank you. And please take advantage of everything going on in a very busy little town of Harwich. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye for now.